Nothing says yummy like a delicious bottle of uh, German mineral water. <laughs> um, Fujifilm listens. I uh, made. I know they watch my videos. Um, I think I'm their biggest supporter on uh, YouTube. I'm uh, not connected with them. I'm not working for them, by the way. Okay. I made a video about uh, three months ago stating uh, a fact of. Uh, of failure on Fujifilm's part. And they, uh, like a couple weeks ago, they posted a video and addressing the point that I pointed out to them. And that was, there's a lot of uh, extremely unintelligent, talking head YouTube celebrities that don't know what the heck they're doing. I, I could say, and yet I would be wrong, RTFM, which stands for Read the Bleeping Manual. But this is not in the user manual, and I pointed out to Fujifilm that these people, especially people that, you know, aren't thinking, this is not unique to Fujifilm. Same is true of Sony and Canon and Nikon and everybody else, because every major uh, camera company has lenses that have, uh, there's at least six different types of motors that actually drive the lenses for focus, and there are lenses that are far less than ideal. And I point this out in my free Fujifilm book, which is in the comments below. I state right there, not for video use. You should not be using it for video. And uh, you're like, ah, you know, I don't like the focus breathing on this Fujifilm camera. And I got this damn, some YouTube celebrity, we won't say who, is using like the worst lenses you could possibly use for video. The 2314, the 56, one, two, and some other lens. I forget what it was, but it was not for video use. Well, you cannot, that's like blaming a Nikon D5, which is very fast autofocus, when you stick a slow screw drive lens on there. The fastest camera in the world with a slow stinking lens is still going to have miserable autofocus, even though it's the fastest camera. Same is true uh, in this regard. Unfortunately, uh, the video that Fujifilm released about two weeks ago still didn't point things out. I pointed out in my free book. Um, that uh, is not in the manual. There's a reason why I wrote that free Fujifilm book. It's 230 pages. That's the third edition. Um, is to point out all the really important stuff that you don't find in the user manual. Because if you're new to Fujifilm or you're new to photography, you would not understand that, hey, I'm not supposed to be using these lenses for video. It's like they're great for photography, but not for video because the motor, you know, will have a slight jerky motion. And of course, Fujifilm did update and it addresses it uh, heartily, I mean, uh, mightily so. Um, with a new firmware update, it was about two weeks ago that they released it uh, for improving. Um, the, uh, the exposure, uh, the flash exposure change where like a subject would come in or come out and, <coughs> excuse me, the exposure, uh, would change because of that. And so that was addressed in that firmware update, but it still cannot physically change the hardware of certain types of lenses. 56.12, just one example, you know, great lens for photography, incredible bokeh. You don't use that lens for video. You, you just don't. The autofocus motor is can't. It's not for that sort of performance. It was not even designed as one of the early Fujifilm lenses for that. Um, unfortunately, Fujifilm did not address that in that video of about two weeks ago. They they hit upon it. They they really made a roundabout statement. Like there are specific video lenses that should be used for video. They perform best for video. Well, that's an accurate statement, but you still you still kind of left out you know half of what you should have said. The other thing that uh, Fujifilm should mention, and this applies to any and all camera platforms, whether it be Nikon, Sony, blah, 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 is that uh, IBIS, when you should or shouldn't use it. I still get uh, emails all the time from people using the, uh, the 100 to 400, for example, or the 50 to 140. And they just leave the IBIS on all the time with like uh, the... Uh, or lens stabilization, OIS, yeah? Doesn't matter if it's lens stabilization or OIS, and in Fujifilm's case, OIS works in conjunction uh, with the uh, IBIS, so the two work in conjunction. People don't realize that an anti-shake mechanism is itself a mechanism that shakes. The way it actually counteracts the shake is itself to shake, whether it be the internal uh, elements uh, for optical image stabilization, OIS, or the sensor itself, which is moving. 
And people were leaving that on at 1 250th and above. It's not a set marker. It depends on the lens and it's uh, four different variables. But essentially above 1 1 25th of a second. Really, that should only be used at 1 60th and below. Unless, of course, it's for video. We're talking about for photography here. And that is not mentioned in the videos. Like, when do you turn... People just leave it all out. You know, I love image stabilization. It makes it looking through the viewfinder better. They leave it on, IBIS and OIS on all the time. That's not good. People will say, I've taken this... Uh, that's like, I know what you're doing. Because, you know, 99% of bird photography, you know, is plenty bright outside. Yeah? It's like, you had... Uh, what were you shooting at? Probably 1 500th of a second. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. Or 1 1,000th. And uh, you had IBIS and OIS on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's your problem right there. They think the lens is defective. And they'll, like, return it to where they bought it. This lens can't take a clear picture. And that lens is primarily, for example, the 100 to 400 used for uh, wildlife bird photography. Yeah. Well, of course the images are blurry. It's because you've left the IBIS and OIS on. One of the two, or both, since they both work in conjunction with one another, on the X-H1 and the X, uh, the X-T4. Did I say X-T3 about 20 minutes ago? If so, sorry about that. They work in conjunction. They are anti-shake mechanisms. But if you're using at higher shutter speeds, 1 250th, 1 500, yada, yada, above, they're inducing shake. You can already take a, a perfectly still handheld shot. Yeah? Especially on a longer lens, it acts as a counterweight and stabilizes the camera uh, for the mechanical shutter shot. It is inducing a shake. Fujifilm does not point this out in the user manual. And that is really, because how would I know that a lot of people are doing that? Because I get a lot of emails on that. Like a lot. <laughs> Fujifilm needs to make a video explicitly pointing that out. When you're doing out, when you're going taking pictures outside, you know you're shooting in sufficient lighting conditions, and you're shooting at one one twenty fifth or higher, as a rough guideline. Turn IBIS off and OIS, because not only do you not need it, but those mechanisms will induce shake, because the anti-shake mechanism is itself. Listen closely. The anti-shake mechanism is itself a mechanism that shakes. Did I make that abundantly clear? I hope so. And it's really, really important on medium format. Medium format too, you actually have a bigger issue with shake. And the reason for that, and no one ever talks about this in any video except for me on YouTube because nobody has a clue, is that is, uh, like say, 1 60th of a second. It applies to any shutter speed. Is 1 60th of a second the same on a, uh, a crop or full frame as it on medium format. Sure it is. No, it isn't. The time of exposure is not the exact same, time, same thing as the time it takes to complete the exposure. Listen closely. This is going to sound contradictory. One sixtieth of a second of exposure. It could be any exposure, by the way. Just say one sixty. One sixty of a second exposure on medium format takes a lot longer then it does 1 60th of a second on full frame or crop set. Well, it can't be. It's 1 60th of a second. That is the time of exposure. That's not the time it takes to complete that exposure. The exposure is 1 60th or 1 1 25th. But that's not the time it takes to complete it. That's why 1 60th of a second or any other shutter speed takes longer on a larger sensor. Yeah medium format especially, than it does on a smaller sensor, full frame or especially crop sensor. I hope I made that abundantly clear. That's the reason why shake is so much of an issue on medium format. Nobody else has made a video about this important point. Why am I the only one? Maybe it's because I actually know how these cameras work. <laughs> You're awful arrogant. I don't like you. You're egotistical. Yes, but the real question is, what I just said, is it right? And the answer is yes, it is palpably so. I hope you like these videos. If you do anything, it's greatly appreciated. Check out my free Fujifilm book, uh, book in the link below. Download it, read it. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>